Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Come Back Stronger where we bring you stories of people who have faced adversity, overcome their adversity and come back stronger. My name is Jimmy Fasig and I'm here with my law partner Dana Brooks Hello. and today we're going to introduce you to Sherry Johnson who is the author of this book Forgiving the Unforgivable and the beautiful thing about Sherry Johnson is that she has gone through some of the worst trauma that anybody can ever go through in this lifetime. Yeah. And she has used that trauma as the fuel to, uh, the fuel to burn her fire, the, her passion for advocating for other people who, would, who she hopes will never have to go through what she went through. Yeah. So it's very exciting stuff. Yeah, and you know, part of what she talks about in her book, which is a fictionalized version of, of a story, and, and she'll tell you more about her intimate personal story, but um, you know, the fact that she was not protected mm -hmm. as a child, you yeah. know, whenever mm -hmm. your, your innocence, and, and when your innocence is taken from you and you have to deal with very adult things at a young mm -hmm. age, you know, it's just, it's too much to put on a child and then to expect them to come out and use that pain and find a way to you know make make peace with it yeah. I guess is Spo spoiler alert she was unfortunately she was raped at eight years old yeah. and then she was impregnated at 10 years old and yeah. forced to marry at 11 and she has overcome such adversity it's phenomenal yeah. to see the powerful amazing woman that she's become and, and what she's done through her foundation yes and yes amazing work and that's what it's all about. It's when, and when uh, a lot of times when we bring you these stories, the best part, of course, is the comeback story, yeah. where, where the person that has gone through so much has used that to benefit society. So that's what it's all about. We're gonna, we're going to go to a commercial right now. But when we come back, we're going to introduce you to Miss Sherry Johnson. I recently had a new client and she suffered a mild traumatic brain injury okay. and she had no idea what had happened that caused her to be injured. Mm. Um, gotcha. But it turns out she had fallen into a pit at an oil change oh. station. And it was 100% oh, their fault. Oh wow. But she, but her injury made her not even understand. Her injury and it makes it me it makes me so frustrated because mm -hmm. folks that suffer concussions or mild traumatic brain injuries, it's really difficult for them to know to what remember, happened right? and to understand yeah. the difference in what their life was and what it is now yeah. because of the nature of their condition. And so the insurance companies need to recognize the full value of that yeah, yeah. instead but of taking advantage of that very unique situation it took yeah. her family telling her you need to call an attorney right. mm -hmm. her family coming with her to the appointment mm -hmm. to say these are the differences mm -hmm. to get her in there and now we're able to help her mm -hmm. i love that Welcome back to Come Back Stronger, where we're introducing you to a true powerhouse of a woman, Miss Sherry Johnson. Here she goes right now. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so you are an anti-child marriage activist. Yes. yes. And I'd like you to start by telling us your story of your child marriage and your life that led up to this point where now you are an activist that are that is preventing other children from having to go through that. Yes, I actually was a a child that was raped at a very early age. I was raped at eight by the bishop of the church of my mom's church. And then um, I got pregnant at the age of nine and I gave birth to my daughter at the age of 10 at Jackson Memorial in, in Miami. Um, and from there, I was forced to marry my rapist who I got pregnant from. And I felt that it was a need of something that we needed to stop once I got older and understood what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I actually stayed in Tallahassee to be able to advocate for the state of Florida for children that was forced into marriage when I found out that there were so many children over 250,000 children that was forced into marriage um, between 2000 and 2015. And that's just in the United States, That right? was just in the United States. Wow, yes. in 2000 and 2015. So this isn't even back 
Like when we're talking about what you went through. Right. This has been late. This is now. So when I saw that, I'm saying, well, it's still going on. It's still happening. So something needs to be done about it. So when you decided to become an activist, what was the first step that you took? How did you how did you get into Well, the first step I took was I started it within my mind, what can I do? What can I do for these children? Because no one should have to go through what I faced in life. It it shouldn't be. So I started a hotline. And with the hotline, I gave a phone number. And with that phone number, I did not want to answer the call. I wanted them to be able to express whether they wanted to talk with someone or they just want to spill their guts, just let it out, you know, whatever the pain was. Because I looked at the situation as you need someone to be able to express your pain to. Mm -hmm. You need someone to hear you. So with that, I started then. And then I started a foundation. And then I went from there to knocking on the legislators' doors and asking them, let's change this. Let's change these laws where children would not be allowed to be forced into a relationship that they are not aware of what's going on in their life. When uh, I was told that you were coming on to give an interview, I started looking up child marriage laws because it was shocking to me. I yes. didn't. I didn't think that children could get married in the United States. Yes, and see, that's what people um, try to understand because I've had legislators to tell me also that that is not true, but it is true. It says the age 18, but there are loopholes. There are two loopholes that allow a child to still be forced by the parent or the uh, agreement with the judge to allow that child to be married. So I know that you helped get the laws changed here in Florida in yes. 2018. Great yes. work. Yes, thank um, you. But prior to that, what were the two loopholes? Was it if you can get a judge to sign off on it? If you can get a judge to sign off on it. If you're pregnant and your parents agree and sign uh, or either says it's okay, then it can happen. When you're under the age of 18. When you're under the age of 18. And that's what happened when you were 11 years old. Exactly. A, a judge actually signed off on your marriage at yes. 11 years old. Yes. Wow. He did. He actually signed off. And I had to write a letter. And while well, they wrote the letter, I had to sign the letter agreeing that I was pregnant and gave birth. Wow. And that was all they needed. So now in Florida... Um, a law was passed, and so those loopholes don't exist anymore, right? Right, correct. You have to be that age of 17, um, a higher, and there are, you cannot uh, marry anyone more than two years of age. You have to get counseling um, prior to marriage, and you have to, you cannot owe any child support or anything of that nature. Uh, to be married. Okay. Um, you are now trying to get laws changed all across the United States, right? Yes. I work with two coalitions, and we work in both uh, areas of the state. Um, right now, we're working in New New York. I'm sorry, New North Carolina. We're working in North Carolina, and we just passed the age of 17 there. Uh, that no child could be forced to be married. We also passed a law in uh, Louisiana as well as Georgia where there is uh, no child under the age of 17 could be married, could be forced to be married. And I know before we started filming, you were telling me that you just were in Washington, D.C. Is that right? Well, I wasn't in Washington, D.C., but we just presented uh, documents to Washington, D.C. so we can pass this law across the board of the whole United States. Mm -hmm. That just, you know, it's it's something that I think most people are going to be shocked about. Yes. To think that in most states in the United States, kids under the age of 17 can get married. Yes. Yes. It's, it's it, a lot of people have approached me and they said, no, this happened in other countries. And um, 
I say, yeah, it's right here happening in your back door, not just in other countries. Um, if you just take a look and do some um, research, you find out that this law has been allowing children to be into relationships that they regret later mm -hmm. that they was put into. Mm -hmm. And they have to suffer. Their life suffers a lot from that. Well, we have to go to commercial break, but when we come back, I want to hear more about your life um, yes. and raising the your children when you were just a child yourself. Yes. Ah. Oh my God, how painful. Can you imagine she's a, she's eight years old and she's being violated like that and then she's, church she's having a baby at 10? No. It is just so hard to believe and so it makes you wonder you know, we've got to show come back stronger, um, come back stronger from any traumas you've been through. But it makes you wonder how can you justify that somebody so young would have to go through so much trauma and so much pain. And I've, I've been, I deal with this all the time because we have, for example, clients that are just sitting at a red light waiting for the light to turn green and then a semi truck comes right. and crashes to them from behind and ruins their entire life yeah. and they say well, how can this happen why did this happen to me right and so but i feel but, like but that's a case of you know that's a case of somebody not paying attention a case of negligence we yeah. deal with that all the time but some of the cases that we get in our practice are things like this people abusing positions of power yeah and positions of trust yeah and and doing it in a way that subjugates women uh, especially sexually and this is something i don't like about this child marriage is because basically is a very paternalistic way of handling a problem a woman a problem girl mm -hmm. it's like okay get her out of her dad's house mm -hmm. hand her off to this man who violated her did this horrible thing instead of addressing what are you doing having sex with a little girl right you right know, we're just like no let's legitimize this mm -hmm. let's put let's put some kind of sunshine and wrap it up in a pretty bow and now she's a, a mom and a wife and now she's got this family no that was child rape yeah that had the government a state sanction the government's supposed to protect our children that's why we can't do anything we want to them the state right. has a higher interest in them than we do they protect them that's why we have these um, um, uh, statutory rape laws because yeah these these kids think they're in love yeah they think they want to be a mommy yeah they think they want to be a wife they don't know their children they can't yes. consent to this yep. so I don't accept any version of, of a judicial sign-off on on something that that makes a child do something that they have no idea what they're getting into making them have a child making them become a wife making them uh, lose their their innocence I just oh I, I get, I'm passionate about it and I'm so glad that mm. that um, Sherry is as well. Well, that that's the the beauty of what she's doing is she's bringing light to this issue and she's actually made real changes in the law, yeah. which is exactly what happens when somebody truly comes back stronger yeah. and that they have they take that that pain and, and pain. they use it as fuel fire. to fi yeah. to to burn that fire to make things happen and make this world a better place and that's exactly what she's done so we're going to go to a commercial break and come back for the next segment of this interview right after this you know what's funny when law firms advertise that they'll give a free consultation every consultation we give is free unless we can get you a settlement based on your injuries right every time you give me a call it's free yeah, I yeah. want you to give me a call. Yeah. You know, we're not going to charge you unless we actually get you something for yeah, your case. That's right. mm -hmm. You don't have to pay me anything unless I win the case. Right. And on top of that, I'm going to pay for all of the court costs and the deposition costs and medical records costs and expert opinion costs. All of that's coming out of my pocket. And if we don't win the case, then we eat those costs at no charge to right. you. Right. So we don't take a case we don't believe in because it's not in our interest. Right. And we don't minimize or devalue your case because that's also not in our interest. Right. So it makes everything fair. If you have a lawyer on a contingency fee, you can hire the very best right. lawyer. Welcome back to Come Back Stronger, where we're uh, about to show you the second part of the interview of Miss Sherry Johnson, a powerhouse of a woman who's overcome so much trauma. Here we go. All right, welcome back. Thank you. So I'd like to get a little personal and find out some more about what it was like being a child yourself, uh, raising your children, because you had six children before you turned 17, is that right? That's correct. Uh, it was no fun. It was all work. 
no fun. I dedicated my life to my children because I felt that I was responsible for them being here. And so I took on that responsibility to be there for them, for every one of them that I gave birth to. Um, and I did the best that I knew how with what I had and what I understood at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I was there um, constantly cooking and taking care, making sure they get meals, they get fed, you know, with baths, taking baths, going to school. I made sure those things that they, you know, took in life that they had, whatever it was. And this all started when you were 11 years old. You're a mom with your child taking care of that baby. That's right. Where most kids at 11 years old had a baby doll. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a real baby that wore real diapers. And when I went back to school after she was born, I had to wash diapers out in the tub and hang them on the line uh, for my baby mm -hmm. when I got out of school. So it, it was no, no joke. It was hard work. And then when you were pregnant, because you were pregnant several times while yes. you were going to school, um, did they allow you to stay in school? No. Each time they found out I was pregnant, I was put out of school. Now, if they didn't know that I was pregnant, like my first uh, pregnancy, I was found out that I was pregnant. I was seven months seven months pregnant so I had went to school for those seven months before I found out but I still was not able to continue after yeah. they found out I was pregnant with my daughter what was it like um, what was your relationship with your mother like my relationship with my mother was not too good because my mother felt thought she was doing what was right by obeying the church rules and regulations and that was not what happened um, to me. She did not protect the rules and regulations for me. She protected the church. Because did she have to sign off on your marriage? She had to support the marriage for the church? She degree? did. She supported my marriage. She made my wedding dress. She made my wedding cake. Um, and she supported to the fullest from what I understand. But I still didn't understand why would she do that. So the whole time when you were having to be married, being mm -hmm. forced to be married, right. um, was she just telling you this is normal, this is right, this is what you need to do? Right. This is exactly what I heard. This is the right thing to do, to make something bad out of, I make something good out of something bad that happened. Yeah. So it's like, I was told that this is the way that God now will um, allow you to st still be that good person uh, because now you're doing what's right. So she made you feel like you'd done something wrong. Exactly. When the deacon in the church is the one that did what was wrong, he was 20 and I was, in, I was nine when I first got pregnant. Yeah. But when we got married, I was 11 and he was 20. Eventually, you were able to divorce him. Is that right? Yes. Tell me about that process. Yes, I had went to an attorney um, long before. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was searching out for an attorney and he allowed me to come in and do a consultation and I did. And he told me, well, it's going to cost you $75. And so I said, okay, which I did not have. But I waited, and then um, I called, I think it was um, Legal Aid. It was Legal Aid, and they gave me a $75 check after I went in and had a consultation with them. They gave me a $75 check, and I gave it to the attorney. And the attorney immediately, how he did it, I don't know because I was only 17, mm -hmm. but he was able to push that divorce through for me. At that point, I just wanted a divorce and get out of the relationship. So at that time, you're 17 years old, you have six children. Yes. What did you do from there? Well, I was by myself anyway because every year I got pregnant, 
my husband left me. And um, so I felt alone. So it was just me and the children. Yeah. So I, I continued to do what I did uh, when he was away. Yeah, just raise your kids. I just raise the kids and focus on them. Yeah. You know, I was a kid myself, so it was like, I, I I knew I was the mom, but still, I was a kid where we had fun. We just enjoyed one another. Yeah. So you have written a book. Yes. Tell, yes. tell me about that book. Yes, I've written a book called Forgiving the Unforgivable, Purple in a Darker Color. Mm. And I don't know if you have saw the story of the color purple by Oprah Winfrey. Yes. Well, this is a little bit darker color of that story that she had written. And um, I, this is the foundation uh, that sponsored this book. It's S. Vaughn Foundation, which is my foundation, mm. a nonprofit organization, a 501c3. And we did this book to let others uh, know that it's okay with sometimes when things happen in life to be able to move forward mm. and in moving forward you forgive and you you never totally forget but you don't focus that in the forefront of your mind yeah you you learn how to establish a pattern of moving forward taking lemons and making lemonades out of them mm -hmm. is something I enjoy saying. So this is what this book is about, is my life story, but what has happened during that time and what is happening now. How do you think that you were able to find forgiveness? I Well, I have been taught many years in my life, you know, going to church, that you have to forgive people because I know people can constantly do things to you. Um, even if I wasn't pregnant, I've gotten a lot of ugly looks and a lot of things said to me that, um, you know, make you feel bad. It doesn't help you, but I realize I have to forgive them and that they don't understand sometimes the things that they say. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel better. When you forgive, it's for you. It's not for the person that's doing you wrong. You feel more free mm -hmm. when you forgive. You let go of that's whatever the situation is. That's the truth. Well, what's next on the horizon for you and your advocacy? Well, we were looking forward to handling this across the nation. Hopefully, we um, presented uh, Washington, D.C. with a letter asking them to let's just um, cancel child marriage across the board throughout the nation. Well, I wish you great success and thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And you're welcome and thank you for having me on your show. Our pleasure. Yes. Wow, what, what a comeback story. What an inspiration. And to think about this, think about this. If it weren't for Sherry Johnson, still today in 2021, actually still today in 2021, there are child marriages on the books yeah. in many of the states of our nation yeah. today. Yeah. This, yeah. Now what happened to her was a long time ago, Not really. but the same laws Not that exist. Long ago. I, right, you're but, right. I mean, you would think hearing some story like this, you'd think this has to be something that is, you know, this person can't be alive who's experienced that. Yes, she is. Yeah. She looks like she's about my age. Yeah. I mean, that is utterly, you know, mm -hmm. unfathomable to so many people, mm -hmm. yet it, it, it happened to her, it happened to so many, and it's still something that has not been completely eradicated. And the fact that if she would meet any resistance about this at all is right. alarming to me, and I think that anybody who resists this should be shamed fully, uh, and she should go online and it should go viral. But uh, we've got to stand up and protect our girls from things like mm -hmm. this. Um, it, they're treated like they're just not even a, a whole person whenever they're just bartered like that. But well, we could talk more about that when we get back. But yeah, yeah we're gonna go to a much. commercial break, but then we're gonna, we're gonna come back and wrap it up. Yeah. I went to lunch with one of my former clients the other day, and she's doing great. She took the money from her settlement, and she started her own company buying and selling vehicles, oh my God. which is really cool because she was in a car crash and then needed oh. a new vehicle, and so now she's able to help other yeah. folks out. 
most of our clients, they find that one of the most frustrating things is the dealing with the vehicle. Oh, well, lo losing your car it can totally disrupt your life. You can, you can lose your livelihood over it. If you can't get to work or, or, you know, what's the worst thing with our clients is we're just trying to help them get well. But if they can't get to the, the health care that they need, you know, that's just another setback. One of the typical things about a comeback story is you take the pain and the struggles and the challenges that you've been through and you use that as the fire that kind of motivates you to do something good for other people. Yeah. And so I love that because now our client did exactly that, like literally to <laughs> the T. Welcome back to Come Back Stronger where we just heard from Sherry Johnson, um, the story of her being raped at eight years old, having uh, to get, getting pregnant at nine years old, forced into a marriage at 11 years old, but coming back from that, getting a divorce from her abuser at 17 years old and coming back from that and now advocating throughout the country to change the child laws in America and creating this book to support her on her quest. Yeah, I, I tell you what so, so strikes me is how important it is for girls to get their education and how empowering it is. And that's why a disruption in their education like this woman had, she had six children by the time she was 17. Unbelievable. And they yank her out of school like mm -hmm. she's the one doing something wrong in this in this state and parent sanctioned union that she found herself yeah. in. Like she's the bad guy? No, that's mm -hmm. nuts. But who's paying the, the freight mm -hmm. on it? She is disrupting uh, disrupting her education. It's why the Taliban don't want their women educated. Mm -hmm. It's why when we had Captain Romani on here, they were trying to kill her family, kill her because she pursued her dream and she as a woman. Yes. You know, this this second class citizenry that's going on around the world, we at least can't have it in this country. And I, I hope everybody is as moved as I am by these kind of shows, and these kinds of stories to get off your fanny and do something about it. Yeah. If it wasn't for people like Sherry Johnson, there would be these type of laws would remain yep. on the books and ch children will still be forced into marriages. It's absolutely unbelievable. No, it's absolutely OK, well, wrong. this has been a very powerful show. I very much appreciate everybody coming. We look forward to the next next time when we can bring you other stories of people who have come back stronger. Thanks for today. And you know what the insurance company offered him? Five thousand really? dollars. He's completely, he's completely blind and they offer him five thousand yeah. dollars. Ask him, ask him to sign a release. To a lot of people especially when they're hurting and when they're down and when they're vulnerable. $5,000 is a life-changing amount of yeah. money. Yeah. And they're not looking at the mm -hmm. value of what has been lost. They're not looking at what it would take to, to make that person whole, which mm -hmm. is our job. Yeah. That's our job. Their job isn't. Their job is to save the insurance company money. Right. And they look at this person and they go, hmm. I bet $5,000 would get your full attention. Right. And they mm -hmm. come in and they dangle it yeah. with a settlement release. And then mm -hmm. once you sign it, you're done. You can't come back to us and ask us to make, wave a magic wand and make that go away. That can't go away. My client didn't accept the $5,000. We took them all the way to trial. We got a $5 million verdict. 